All right, guys, the book is about sequential art and using it in the classroom as an educational tool. H how did it come about? How did you guys come up with the idea and get together for this book? There had been a number of other books related to comics and education. And when I was working on my book, looking at uh, graphic novels and comics in libraries, I thought that it might be interesting to look at comics and education as kind of uh, you know, an extension of comics and libraries. And uh, uh, I approached Carrie to see if she would be willing to be a co-editor on the book. We had, we had worked together on, on some other things and uh, it just sort of came together. And, we, we put out a call for papers. And then what happens from there? Is it just a matter of reading them all and finding a narrative in there? Well, it was actually a peer-reviewed process. We did have the essays peer-reviewed by people who are considered to be very knowledgeable in these areas because some of the essays have a different slant. It's not just about graphic novels, but maybe behind, about the psychology a little behind that. And then we arranged them into sections or chapters and tried to get everything flowing well. And that last step was the index, which we're very proud of our index. Yes. <laughs> what, what's why, why, what's particular about the index? Are there some Easter eggs in there? <laughs> what's the deal? Well, yeah, they're, they're there's some Easter eggs in there. Uh, there's some Easter eggs in, in the acknowledgments too. Um, I, I, I throw those into all my books uh, if, if for those who know how to look for them. The book took almost three and a half years mm -hmm. and not every essay that was submitted made the cut. It was a long, long process in, in doing that and making sure that, you know, that, that the pieces didn't overlap too much you know in the content we've got a really nice range from looking at uh, the history mm -hmm. of sequential art and education going back to the 1940s to experiences of one professor and, and how his colleagues didn't exactly like the fact that he was using comics in the classroom at a at a university and, and how um, he was being sabotaged by one one of his colleagues looking at how how to use the x-men to teach gender issues and talking talking more about that what are some of the aspects that comic books play in education or can play in education because obviously not everyone's going to think that they can as you illustrated in that story you just said but what are some of the the aspects that people can learn from comic books in an educational environment well they have a lot of cultural significance in a lot of cases and as far as the gender roles, I know that one of the essays that we have in the book, it talks about the strong female characters. Why do you keep writing such strong female characters? And the quote for that was, well, because people keep asking me why I'm writing that. And I think that was Joss, wasn't it? Joss Whedon was the one who yeah. said that. And so there's a lot to be learned about just interactions with people and in the classroom setting also with comics and graphic novels you're using both sides of the brain so you're using your left and your right to interpret the image and to read the words on the page so there's a lot of value that we want people to see that there are in graphic novels in the classroom. It's not like reading a, a traditional novel or a newspaper or something like that you're, you're engaged um, and so rather than dumbing it down, you, you know, I would argue you can actually get smarter. One of the best stories I've, I've ever heard was none other than by the demon himself, uh, Gene Simmons, who came over from Israel as a child and learned to read by, or learned English by reading comics. It really can be a beneficial tool for all ages. Rob's a friend of the show. He's been on several times. Our viewers are familiar with him. Carrie, it's your first time on. What, what, what's your favorite comic book or what's your background in, in comic books? Are you a big fan of a certain book? or? Well, I was expecting you to ask Marvel or DC. Oh. So, you know, <laughs> I was prepared for that question. I'm, I'm an X-Men fan. I remember right. watching the cartoons more than reading the comics growing up. But with my daughter, she's a bit of a reluctant reader or was for a while. And so Wolverine is her favorite. Right. And then my son is a Deadpool fan. Okay, now do you find yourself, if you're, if you're familiar with the cartoons, uh, do you find yourself, when you actually read the books, hearing the voice of the cartoon Wolverine? Yes, I, I would have to say I do. Wolverine, um, Jean Grey, 
Cyclops. They they all kind of you know in my mind that's what they sound like. Yeah, absolutely. And now now Rob, you've been dying to point this out. We are at Premier Cinemas in the Comic Book Lounge. Is there a specific villain that may have some significance in the Lubbock area? There is. Uh, Fred J. Dukes, the Blob. He's from Lubbock, and his power is immovability. And he's, he's an awesome villain. Uh, uh, on screen, he was in that not-so-good Wolverine Origins movie. But uh, he, is, he is Lubbock's comic connection because his origin, he's born right here in Lubbock, Texas. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. The book is Graphic Novels and Comics in the Classroom. Excuse me. It's available on Amazon.com. And it's Carrie Simi and Rob Weiner. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.